one and only true living God. They burn their own sons and daughters as religious sacrifices. Are y'all listening? They married into families that wanted absolutely nothing to do with God. They willfully disobeyed God and rejected God's messengers. And brothers and sisters, that's evil. We cannot do evil things and think God does not see what we're doing. I hope y'all caught that. It says, the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. You know what? You reap what you sow. As a result of such acts, God allowed them to get into bondage for 40 years. It's in the text. It says in verse 1, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for how long? 40 years. That's a long time. And within that time period, people died off. It's a long time. Philistines, when I think about the Philistines, I think about David. You remember David? David, he fought Goliath. Goliath was a Philistine, the giant. And this enemy, believe it or not, if you study this, the Philistines were constantly a problem for the children of Israel for many years. You see, if you don't destroy or cut out ungodly behavior to the root, it will follow you. Absent for a minute and it comes right back to you. It becomes a cycle of evil. I had a conversation with my parents after uh, looking at all of these killings, and whether it was in Louisiana, whether it was in Minnesota, whether it was in Dallas, of the police officers, all of it was horrible. But I, I spoke to my parents and I raised a couple of questions to them, and um, um, I wanted to know, is this what they felt in the 50s and the 60s? And I wanted to know if this was like the same and, you know, what was different. And they said, overall, they felt that it was the same, except technology made a difference because they could not see it as it was appearing now. You know, for a young lady, this young lady to be in a car, I don't know if you all really felt that. To, 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 to have your fiancé or your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, sitting right next to you and to see them shot and killed right in front of you by a police officer who you're supposed to look up to and supposed to protect you and you did everything you're supposed to all because of a broken taillight. He says, take, let me see your, your, your registration, your driver's license. Don't they always tell you that at the beginning? And he says, well, listen, I, I have, I'm licensed, I have a gun. I'm licensed, I do have a gun, but I'm going to take out, as you asked me. So he takes, he goes, reaches to take out the, the, the license and the registration, and he's done. He gets shot in the arm or wherever else he was shot, and it killed him. And, sh and this young lady, she's right there with this technology, social media, videotaping this, and speaking live. Horrible. And then look at the wickedness, how it gets where even her own daughter, who's about, I think, three or four years old, watches all this sitting in the back seat. And then she ends up, if you follow along, she comforts her mother. So my parents said the technology is different. But also they said that back then we had a leader. I thought that was interesting. They were referring to Dr. King. They said back then there was a voice, a very strong voice, and it brought the people together. That's something we do not have. And I'm sure there may be some other things, but I just thought that that was interesting to hear from my parents because they felt like it's, it's happening all over again, a cycle, a cycle of evil. And let me insert here that racism and hatred is evil. Messiah, I want you to hear this. Racism and hatred is evil. And I have found from my observation down through the years that it can be taught and caught by people in the world. Children of various ethnic backgrounds, they will learn, laugh, and play with African Americans. Eventually some, and not all, will stop because a parent or family member begins to brainwash their child to think anyone of dark complexion is dangerous to be around. And that's how that seed and root of racism gets 
started right then in the home. They make people feel that they are superior to African Americans, and you wonder why, when you get at work, why you are feeling that. It's because it's something that has been nurtured within them for a long time. And then some of them, as they get older, they catch it too because they're hanging around people that think like that. It is wicked and it is a spirit. It's hatred. Hatred is evil. And trust me, God sees it and he is not pleased. I wish I had somebody here that understood that. I might also add that, 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 that God is not pleased with racism, if you will, when we do it against each other either. So, you know. There is a kind of discrimination or racism that we can do to each other, but he's not pleased against that, nor is he pleased when we discriminate or be racist against whites or any other ethnic group. It stinks in the nostrils of God. Verse 2 says, And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. You know what I thought about, what God placed upon my heart, was that in the midst of all of this evil that's going on, now you, 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 you heard it, the children of Israel did evil in the sight, of, they did evil again in the sight of the Lord. So he delivers them into the hand of Philistines. But in, in the midst of all of this wickedness, God can always find some righteous people. I don't care how bad it gets, God always has a remnant. He always has somebody that's going to serve him, that's going to stand up for righteousness like Mr. and Mrs. Manoah. That's what we'll call her, call them because we don't know his wife's name. But Mr. and Mrs. Manoah, they stood up. They were like a bright, shining light in the midst of the darkness, and God saw that and was able to use them. And I don't care how wicked people would get, God will always have someone somewhere that is faithful and willing to serve him. Somebody ought to say amen. Light will always stand out in darkness. And the Lord has a long history of taking people and things that are empty and broken and unproductive, things that are unwanted, people that are unloved, people that are frowned upon by some people and cause them to be productive. So in other words, if you're sitting here today and you feel like you have been looked down upon, you have been overlooked for something, God knows how to shift things around. He always knows how to make things that seem to be empty. He can fill it if he wants to. So here you have a woman who cannot give birth. She's barren, broken, empty. But yet God sends his angel to let her know that she will conceive. And you know when God says something, it will come to pass. Can I get a witness? It will come to pass. So the question is, how do I break the cycle of evil? How do I break the cycle of evil? Of evil very quickly it's very easy I, and y'all gonna help me with this number one say turn from that's that's very simple if it's evil if it's a cycle of evil you got to turn from it the children of Israel needed to turn from wickedness they needed to turn from sin in other words they needed to repent that's what repentance is, turning away from. If one is going in this direction, repentance is turning and going in the opposite direction. So you need to turn from. The first thing you break the cycle is to turn from. Number two, turn to. Tell somebody, turn to. So we said turn from, we said now turn to. Turn to who? Turn to God. That's who. Turn to God. Repent and now return. That's what the children of Israel needed to do. They needed to turn from and they needed to turn to. Number three, they needed to turn up. Somebody say turn up. See, I know what y'all thinking. Somebody's thinking, turn it up. Oh, turn it up. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about that kind of turn up. I'm talking about turn up in revival. Turn up in your prayers. Turn up in seeking God's face. Turning up in how increase the time that we spend in the word of God. Increase the time that we spend in our worship before God. Turning up brings revival. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. We said turn from, turn to, turn up, and now turn around. Tell somebody to turn around. The cycle of evil is going, but how do you get it turned around? It's in the text. 
Because if you think about it, God saw that the people were evil and they kept doing evil. So he raised up a deliverer and deliverer's name was going to be Samson. That's the man who was going to come around. And he was going to be the one that would be the representative or an ambassador for God to bring change and to fight this evil. Brothers and sisters, we can't do this thing on our own. We can't do it by ourselves. But I do believe that if we trust God, God will turn things around. And if you don't believe it yet, the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, then will I forgive their sin, then will I heal their land. I say it again, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I forgive their sin, then will I heal their land. God will heal if we seek his face. He will. He will always raise up a deliverer, but we as a people, we as a nation must remember that. I know it sounds old-fashioned. I know it sounds like, oh, well, you know, that's how we used to do it. This is something we need to keep doing. You need to keep praying. You need to keep studying God's word. We need to keep worshiping God. We need to keep serving him and putting him first. Somebody ought to give God praise just for a minute. As I thought about it, there was a deliverer that came named Samson in a time where there was wickedness and evil. But there was also another time where there was a lot of wickedness and evil going on. And another deliverer came into the world. His, his name was Jesus. You remember Jesus? Jesus, the deliverer, Jesus, the lily of the valley. Do you remember Jesus, the bright and morning star? Do you remember Jesus that came to save you, save me from our sin? That's the one that came into this world. Even though his own received him not, he came in with a purpose and he delivered us. Even though there was a cycle of sin in our lives, we were born in sin. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I don't know about you today, but I'm thankful that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Can I get a witness today? You don't sound like you're really persuaded. Can I get a witness that Jesus will deliver us? Is there anybody here, you have been seeing a cycle in your life and God stepped into your life and delivered you? You couldn't do it on your own, but God stepped in right on time and he cut it right to the root. And now here you are in church. Where maybe just a few years ago you'd be at that club, but that's another sermon for another day. Brothers and sisters, as we close today, Prophetically, racism, the political landscape which we find ourselves, and the media, they're all working together. I want you to listen very closely. The enemy is using all of them to work together to bring about and raise up this evil. I thought it was very interesting. Maybe I'm the only one. But while we are trying to get over, or not get over, but to deal with the two men that were killed, African Americans that were shot by police officers. And let me say this, not all police officers are bad. Y'all know that, right? And not all white police officers were bad. But I thought it was interesting that it seems as though when the five police officers were killed, it seems as though that took on a different spin then. Now everybody, oh, this is just terrible. It was terrible for the two men that were killed. Their families are grieving as well. We grieve for the officers that were killed, their families, but also those too. And if you watch the media, they gave more. It's like it really became a serious thing then. All the four was just like, oh, okay. Oh, terrible. It was horrible. 
Watch the political landscape. Watch the media and how they're portraying. Why is it that someone has to ha bring up the fact, well, you know, they did have a record. What does a record have to do with killing somebody? We are crying foul play about what we see happening in the world. But brothers and sisters, this is the twist in this. We are doing the same thing in the church. There is a major neglect of responsibility within the body of Christ. We are playing church. We are playing politics in the church. We're not being committed in the church of Jesus Christ. We're not studying the word of God like we should. We're not praying privately and barely doing it in public. We come to church when we feel like it. We try to run a ministry when you're not even dedicated to the ministry. We have favoritism, we have scheming, we have hatred, we have whoring, people running the tongue and assassinating the character of God's servants. We have people that are selfish in the church. We, we have people that are inconsiderate, people that are unloving, people that are abusive at the home, in the community, and in the church. People that are hiding under a church title and a racist at the same time. I hope you hear this. They have never fully turned their life over to Christ and they resist the Holy Ghost. Have you forgotten about the fact that God healed you before? Have you forgotten about the fact that God delivered you, that God took care of you, that God looked out for you and raised you up before? And now you see the church as a social club. You don't see the power of God because it has become social. As I have said for years, the church is a place for fellowship, but first we have to worship. Worship, then you fellowship. Some people accepted Christ and they never grew after that. And so they become spiritual dwarfs. In the church, if this kind of behavior of the church continues, the church of Jesus Christ, God will only turn things around temporarily and the cycle of evil that we just saw this past week will come again. I believe that the church of Jesus Christ has a responsibility. We have a right. We can get God's attention to move on our behalf. I really believe it because it's in the Bible. Is there anybody here that believes the Bible? Am I the only one that believes what's in this Bible? I believe the Bible is still real. I believe it has power in it. Brothers and sisters, I hate to tell you this, but if we do not get it right as a church body, not only here, but in, across the land, this cycle of evil will continue and it will get worse. And at some point, there, this land will become a land of lawlessness. I hope you're listening. Can you imagine everybody walk, and anybody walking around with a, with a military gun? Don't think it's too far off now. You can't even go to the store because people have already broken into the store and taken everything out. Or they're after you because they see you look like you have some money and because there's no law that can keep them down, they will hurt you or harm you, kill you. Have you thought about that? If we are not careful as a body of Christ, things will happen. God will allow us to get to our knees. I haven't seen this kind of concern since 9-11. Why does it have to take all these years? For us now to then start thinking about, oh, Lord, what's going to happen? What's going on? But if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Somebody ought to give God praise today.
Come on, we can do better now. We can give God praise for the word of God. The Lord sees. The Lord knows. And he can do anything but fail. Come on, let's give God praise. Think about what God is able to do. If you think about the power of God, God is able to do anything he wants to do whenever he wants to. And I believe, as I have looked at the Bible down through the years, when people cried out to God, he responded. But if we're just sitting here going right along with it, and I got to get up here, and I'm, I, now I'm, this is one church. Can you imagine all the churches where pastor has to say, come on, let's get up and praise God. Come on, let's thank God. You don't need somebody to tell you that. When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, it could have been you that the police officer pulled over. It could have been your grandchild, your husband, your wife, anybody. We can't take anything for granted today. I feel like I, you know, some of the pastors shared uh, some things that I was thinking and feeling. And I must, I, I have to confess this to you. And I know we got some police officers here. But you know what? I'm always praying before I leave the house. But now I'm praying even harder because we don't know how we're going to get back if we're going to get back. It doesn't matter whether I'm the Reverend James B. Logan of the pastor of the Messiah. But that doesn't mean anything. Title, nothing. I don't care how nice you smile. That doesn't mean anything. But at the same time, that doesn't mean we need to get back at people either. You don't fight evil with evil. Hello? You don't fight evil with evil. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's why you need to be in church. Bring your kids to church. They don't need to be home. Bring them out. Wake them up. Get them out of bed. I'm tired. I'm tired. I was out. I was get them up out the bed and bring them to church. If they don't have on a suit, bring them out anyhow. We need to be in the house of God. It's time out for playing games. I've been saying this. Stop. We have to stop playing church. God sees and he knows. God knew this was going to happen before it even happened. And we have a responsibility. I believe if we call on God, he will answer. And not only that, he'll give us a strategy to know how to have dialogue with the right people. And not only have the dialogue, but then implement some things to make things better. And it can begin with each of us. It should begin with each of us in the household of God. Brothers and sisters, I hope you heard this word today. And hope you receive it and the spirit which it is given. And I always say all lives matter. I do believe that. Y'all know me. But I, after looking at what's happened to this week, I need to emphasize, especially for the African-American community, and I know all my other brothers and sisters, you all understand, it's hard for blacks to keep seeing the same thing over and over again. This, this gentleman who in Dallas, he killed uh, those five police officers and wounded some others. I don't know his background that thoroughly. I really don't. I'm just going based on what we heard. You probably heard too and read. But could it be that he got so tired of seeing this happen over and over again? If he, was, if he did have some mental health issue, did that spark it? Maybe it triggered it. Maybe he, he was also in the military as well. Maybe he saw some injustice there, and he comes back here figuring that the United States, his home is going to be different, and he sees the same thing. He's fighting for his country, then comes back, and now he sees his own people getting killed. Can you imagine that? Could it be? There's so much in this world. And young people, when your parents tell you to come home, come home. Don't, don't, don't start acting up. Well, you know, well, you know, Shaniqua, she going to be there till 2 o'clock. Well, that's Shaniqua. But you come home. Listen, this is a time for children to be obedient to your parents. I mean, it's always been that way, but now it's, it's too graphic. It's, it's, it's too much. And it's getting to a level now where you can't wander the streets. You can't just hang with anybody. You can't just get in anybody's car. 
well, you know, that's just my friend. You don't know. And if it is your friend, you don't know sometimes what's going on with them. And timing is important. You don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people doing the wrong thing. Evil is lurking, brothers and sisters. Evil is lurking. The devil is busy. They used to say that years ago. The devil is busy. He's really busy now. He's turned up the heat a little bit. But I do believe the Bible. I, I still believe the Bible. Great is he that is within me than he that is within the world. And brothers and sisters, if you're here today, I trust that you heard this message. No matter how young you are, how old you are, I don't care how long you've been in the church, I don't care what your title is, I don't care if you don't know how to spell book, listen to the word of God. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then will I hear from heaven. You know what, have you ever thought about that? I'm going to close. Have you thought about when, when the children of Israel, when, they, when, they, when God told Joshua to tell the people, walk around the wall and it will fall. That's unheard of. That's a strategy that's crazy. But when you are a child of God and you are seeking God, God will show you what to do and how to do it and how to defeat your enemies. So this evil wickedness that we see, this racism, this hatred that we see, God has a strategy for that. And trust me, he knows how to put it to rest.